Good morning from beautiful northern Wyoming. We got a little bit more snow. Not a whole lot here, quite a bit at my house. I was actually hoping for a little bit more here because um, last time I was out a couple, three days ago, um, Astro split his pad real bad. And he's, for the most part, out of condition, out of commission. And so I'm just heading out, hoping to find some huns dug in somewhere. And if there was a little bit more snow, they'd be more easy to spot and more likely to be dug in. But we'll look and see what we got. And if all else fails, we'll um, just toss pigeons. I can see grouse in that tree right up there, but I've tried this spot before and it didn't work very well when the grouse were in the trees. I'm really hoping to find some huns out in the open away from everything. The snow is a little bit deeper, there's like a sweet spot of snow depth. But it's easy to spot them, and there's enough that still hold, kind of duck under it. If there's less, it's harder to spot them because rocks and other things stick up, and they don't always hold as well in the snow. They still are usually fairly well, but not as well. And if it's real deep, you're just looking for roughed up snow and hoping to be able to see their heads sticking up out through the snow, or maybe have a height advantage where you can see down in. And then they'll hold beautifully, but sometimes they'll dump back into the snow to avoid the falcon, which can make for a lesser quality flight. This is snow, most places here is a little bit thin for it to be ideal, but it'll work. I think ideal is probably, oh, six inches or so of consistent even snow. We had a lot of wind with this storm, so it blew it around, we got lots of drifts. When there's drifts, the, the huns will, of course, go to the, the thin spots, not the deep spots. Why dig through a, a big, deep drift when you can just go to a, a blowed off spot? You know, as long as the food underneath is as good, which is usually grass, that's what they mostly eat in the winter. I think that's what they mostly eat year round. could be huns. I'm going to get back farther before glassing them. I didn't want to bump them pretty close. 
if it's indeed Huns. And nope, it's just bare rocks. I thought there were Huns on the, the hillside. I guess I'll glass the rest of it quick just to see if I can spot anything. No, false alarm, just rocks. Or dirt clouds or some such thing. I don't think I'm going to bother going through the gate and checking all this, but I will use the binos to check from here a lot of it. pretty much the most of this field that I can readily check with just looking and glassing. So um I haven't seen anything. I haven't even seen any old digs, but you know it's the snow being so fresh there's not gonna be a whole lot of old digs. One of the reasons I decided to come out today even though it was limited on dog, you know basically non dog non existent is the fresh snow will make it a lot easier to find stuff. Any disturbed snow is, you know, potentially something. There's not going to be a lot of that. I'm not seeing anything here, but I've got a few other places I can check. Just, you know, drive by and glass, see if I can spot anything before having to resort to flying pigeons. And some of them, the one up here, I'm going to go to the right. Uh, probably the snow isn't too deep. I can probably get in there, but it could be drifted up. We'll see. It might be turned around. Anyway, well, off to the next field.
was a little deep, but not horrible. Let's see if we can spot some Huns up here. It's going to be a little trickier with the sage up here to spot them. But as always, you're hoping to get at least a little bit lucky. Bald Eagle cruising over. Go farther away. Guys that aren't used to hawking around eagles, when they see an eagle they don't want to fly. I see eagles every day. If I didn't fly every time I saw an eagle I'd never fly. But I do keep close tabs on and watch where they go and try and Keep track of where they're at, hopefully keep them farther away. That one looks like it's going to cruise back the way I came. Keep going, that's good. And it's a bald either dangerous, but not quite as bad as Golden's. The spot up here has been real regular of having Huns. I guess one option would be to fly it on spec. Just take a pigeon. That is a possibility. Looks like there's a raven up on the water tanks up there. 90% certain it's a raven. Let me make sure. Yeah, it's a raven. Astro's foot's sore. He can run around a bit, though. He could help flush. Find something in a little limited area, but... The bad thing is I really don't like tossing pigeons here, because... It's hard to get out of here quickly in the truck, and... You know, if he chases it for miles, and i got to go track him down. It takes me a while to get out of here. Which I don't like. He's been real good about not chasing stuff far in recent weeks, but he has a Jura Falcon, so you can't really count on that. Uh, decisions, decisions. I guess if I'm going to fly down spec, I could check the wind direction. We'll do that just to get a little more information and make a better decision. Yeah, it's right in my nose. Hmm. I think I'm going to go ahead and fly it. I'll take the pigeon and only toss it if he's flying well. Yeah, what the heck. Looks like he's ready to go. Hey, 
Getting a little sticky footed today, more so than usual. I don't think I mentioned the temperature. It was minus two when I left the house. But there's a little wind and it's sunny, so it's pretty comfortable. I hope this isn't a mistake. Running Astro, his foot's pretty sore. He'll run, but I don't want to tear it up. That's looking pretty good, actually. Clyde, he's up decent. Astro doesn't have a mark yet. Solid, but there's something here. Or at least was. Maybe it was old set. Go oh, check, make, I don't see Astro. Make sure he's not on point, he's coming back. There he is. Clyde's pitch has come down, but I, I want to reward him with a, a toss. Okay, he's broken off, good. I was hoping not to have to lure him to get him to break off, come back with some pitch, and maybe we'll find some Hans. Astro! Back here where you smelled some in case we've missed it. possible where he smelled them back here there actually was something and just went past it and lost the scent but I don't think that's the case now that he's run back through it 
Okay, where's Clyde? About to land. Let's catch him before he does. Yeah. He just wants to lure. Once he decides to land, he is so focused. Hop! All right, come on. Hop! Hopefully this crunchy icy snow didn't tear up Astro's foot too bad. So close to the end of the season. Conditioning is kind of pointless at this point. I only toss the one pigeon because it's I toss a pigeon that I know real well. How's your foot? I don't see any blood. That's good. A little bit maybe. And picked up and go. I'm gonna put Astro in the truck, save his foot. I don't know if it's gonna heal in time to be useful more than just what I did before the season's over. So I haven't put Clyde up. If I was for sure it was done, I'd probably just put Clyde up and call it quits. Are you licking it good? Yeah, he's not leaving bloody footprints. Okay, let me see it. It doesn't look any worse than it was, so that's good. You get in there. <sighs> kind of parked on a snowdrift there. 11th I've been thinking. A little more about if I want to start a new bird. My original thoughts are no. I usually do best with fewer, put more effort into them. But I haven't started a new bird well since I got Bonnie and Clyde. That was 10 years ago. That's the longest I've ever gone since I took up falconry as a kid without starting a new bird. Actually by a long shot. I think the longest I'd ever been before was probably three or four years. I don't know, I definitely don't want to start a new bird if um, even influenza is still around and I'm not hawking ducks. Hawking ducks are first year I think is real important for confidence and to get them wet on ducks and everything. So I think I'll wait and see how that shakes out between now and getting a new bird time before making my final decision. And even though I'd like to fly another cast, that's just too many birds. I think what I'd probably do is 
Let's go pull a prairie falcon. Late taken ice. I like prairies. I like late taken ices. Only flown one passage prairie. And it was okay. It's, I like the, the ice is a little better. Late ice is not imprint. Definitely don't want an imprint. But sometimes passage birds come with a little baggage. Like have had a, a bad encounter with some quarry you're wanting to hunt. Or be really seriously wed to something you don't want to hunt. And um, the one I had could crop up completely enough that she was stepping off the kill in under five minutes, which made her about impossible to fly. Even hawking ducks on a pond, if it takes you usually more, a lot of times more than five minutes to get around the other side of the pond just to get to your bird. And I'm, I'm talking full blown gorge, stepping off the quarry, and obviously completely unresponsive to my lure or anything at that point in literally five minutes. I've heard that's a, a common problem in passage jurors, but um, not so much in passage prairies, but she obviously had been taught by things that robbed her to um, knock it back quick. Okay, let's see what Clyde did today. Okay, 266 feet, 2.4 total miles. The stoop was only 63 miles an hour. I actually probably did that in level flight as well. He wasn't very high when I tossed the pigeon. He lost a lot of his pitch. So, um, he didn't have a real quick stoop, but that's okay. Oh, this other pigeon I brought can go home. Well, it's a beautiful day. I was getting excited there for a minute when Astro was on point. It must have just been some old scent. That's where the Huns have been hanging out the last few times I've been here. So, it would not have been surprising to find him. It would have been a, a sweet flush flight. He had decent pitch when I got to the, that spot. So, but as always, you have to get a little bit lucky for things to work out. Make all the right decisions. Have a good dog good amounts of quarry and all that and you still got to have a little bit of luck on top of it not near as much if you don't do all that stuff you can be as lucky as you want and you still won't have any success it's still nice to get out a few more flights in even if Astro can't work I'll just do the same thing I did this morning see if I can find some birds and if not just toss pigeons finish up the season I'm, I'm not ready to quit I want to keep hawking Otherwise, I would have just put him up. But, and as Murphy's Law usually goes, I'll probably see something on the way out. Unless I had two birds. If I had two birds, you don't see anything on the way out. If you still have, if you have a bird left to fly, it's just a funny Murphy's Law. Babe. But anyway, as always, thanks for watching.